So with our judge, now in the centre of the ring, please give a, a very warm welcome to our one of the three finals as they enter the main ring, led in by the Bearded Collie. The Bearded Collie, or Bearded Collie, you know, is the green of the Royal Association of Scotland. And the red for the Bearded Collie. The Smooth Collie is raising the train of the smooth back of the tri-coloured puppy. Well, you join us now for the Vulnerable Breeds competition here in the main ring at Cruft, and these are the Vulnerable Breeds coming into the ring, all the qualifiers. Frank Haynes joining me. And these are breeds which have very few registrations each year, under 300 registered each year, so they are at risk of uh, becoming very rare. Part of our historic culture, social culture, are breeds of dogs. I'm very passionate about keeping them going and encouraging them and promoting them. So just entering the ring, the Manchester Terrier. We saw a beautiful example of the breed taking play, uh, competing in the Terrier group last night and the Celium too. I know this is one of your favourites, Frank. It, it is indeed. It's a pity that a lot of the Terrier breeds are in this, this uh, vulnerable section. And here's another one. Perhaps it's the grooming which is required to keep terriers looking smart, which has put them at peril. But uh, they're well worth the effort. And here comes the Bloodhound from the Hound Group. And here is the Irish Wolfhound, the reputedly the tallest breed of dog in the world. A true giant and gentle to boot. The Otter Hound. Of course, a breed whose job has, has uh, departed. Otter hunting banned many years ago now, but they, they can still be used to deal with vermin like mink. And here's the English Toy Terrier from the Toy Group, bred down from the Manchester Terrier. Fine and dainty. The lovely Charlie, the King Charles Spaniel. One of the Royal Spaniels from the 16th and 17th centuries. And surprisingly, the English Setter is in this uh, category too. This is a very stylish gun dog. And another one, the Gordon Setter, the black and tan Gordon. A native breed of Scotland. <laughs> Not too keen on the whole idea of taking part. <laughs> And yet another one, the Irish Red and White Setter, and this one's a very smart one, comes in looking very handsome. The gorgeous curly-coated Retriever. And here is the Clumber Spaniel, the most substantial of the Spaniel family, coming in this orange and white colour. And the gorgeous and very distinctive coat of the Irish Water Spaniel. The Sussex Spaniel. And here the distinctive roll and golden tips of the coat of the Sussex Spaniel. And this one a beauty. The only kennel to continue the breed of the dog during the Second World War. The breed is steadily developed, although it remains one of our vulnerable breeds. And there's the Welsh Springer Spaniel, I believe the last of our competitors here. Such a stylish looking dog. There's our judge, Tom Mather, very experienced judge. He uh, used to show Japanese chins and Michon Frises, but now widely experienced across all the breeds. And I believe Tom will have prejudged these competitors and will give us a nice cut when he's had a chance to have another look. Just deciding which is the shortlist that he wants in this very close and competitive uh, category. Call out his shortlist, and that's led by number six, the Dandy Dinmont Terrier. There's the little Dandy Dinmont, a mustard, that's the colour, the fawn golden colour of the Dandy Dinmont. 
hard to believe Dandy Dinmont would be a vulnerable breed, isn't it? They're such charming yep. little dogs. Absolutely. The Kerry Blue. Number 14, the Bloodhound. And here comes the Bloodhound. And this looks a very athletic one when it came. It impressed me. The giant Irish wolfhound. And the next shortest three is the King Charles Spaniel, number 19. And there's the little <laughs> Royal Spaniel, the King Charles, and a very nice temperament. This is a tricolour. Never stop smiling, do they? Uh, that very stylish Irish red and white setter looks super coming into the ring and is pulled out into the final cut. And the curly coated retriever, this. Astrakhan curls cover the body. The Sussex Spaniel. That beautiful Sussex Spaniel is coming now. Rolling action. The Welsh Springer Spaniel. And the last of our finalists, the Welsh Springer Spaniel. So, as our other vulnerable breeds leave the main arena, can I also show your appreciation and congratulate them on their success? They're all winners, but Tom Mather's shortlist of nine breeds. The Sussex and the Welsh there. Study of concentration now. This is a matter where details make the difference. I think we're going to see them move again. They're going to reorganise themselves into size order because... Uh, if they are moved together, of course the bigger dogs need to go ahead. Those long legs need a little bit more room. We don't want a traffic jam. No, we don't want a traffic jam or a run over Charlie. <laughs> Lovely straight front on that Irish wolfhound. Sturdy bone, beautiful tight strong feet, essential for a working hound. Noble head. This one's uh, from a famous kennel in Yorkshire, and now onto the the judge. Just checking the details in the bloodhound, looking at the head, the long ears with a slight inward curl to them, a breed feature, pliant skin. Gorgeous pearly white with those wonderful red markings on the Irish red and white setter. Comes from the same rootstock as the Irish setter, but nowhere near as popular, which is a great pity. Though a lovely breed, very handsome. The curly coated retriever moving on to the Welsh Springer Spaniel. Welsh Springer Spaniel. Happy Welsh Springer Spaniel. And there's the very happy Welsh Springer Spaniel. This rich chestnut and white is the only colour in which this breed is seen. The Kerry Blue on Terrier tiptoes as always. That wonderful blue colour with the slightly more black coloured points. And the tail quivering with excitement at being in this big ring competition. Now you were very partial to this Sussex, Frank. Yes, it it's a beautiful type. It's a substantial and low set in this lovely golden liver. This one has been best of breed at Crufts three times. That's amazing. He'll be competing again tomorrow. Look at this tail on the Dandy Dinmont. What a fantastic temperament. Complete charmer. <laughs> that Weasley body, a rise and fall of the top line is very correct for the breed. And there's the tricolour King Charles. So Tom Mather moving back to the top of his line. He's going to move them all together, which is why you put them in size order to start with. Get one last chance to see them on the move. He'll be looking at the forward reach and how they use the hocks and the top line. What is it the old stockman always used to say? If they're made right, they move right. Show champion, the Red. The rolling movement. All breeds don't move the same. You can have breed specific movement. The clean action of the Welsh Springer. The slight roll of the Sussex. Strong head, strong bone.
and a wonderful temperament. This is a breed which, where the breeds have really worked hard to get them more outward going. Little Dandy Dinmont driving well from behind. Look at those little legs going. It's the only breed which has its own tartan, with a black and yellow tartan given to the Dandy Dinmont breed by the Duke of Buccleuch about five years ago. Amazing, eh? Look at that. A study in concentration. Final of the wonderful British and Irish breeds. Who will be the winner of our Vulnerable Breeds competition for 2018? 2017, with qualifying classes being held, many championship shows throughout the United Kingdom. I think we're nearing a decision. He's given the nod for the boards to come out. Our judge, Tom Mather, has called for the award boards. Now, decisions. Over, Over to the left, it's the Irish Wolfhound, the tallest dog in the breed, in the, in the ring, takes the prize. Such a lovely looking example of the breed, sound all through. And I'm very pleased that this is one of the most athletic, best moving bloodhounds I've seen for a long time. I thought it was Beautiful animal. <laughs> Best moving, he's off. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, can I ask you all, you also to show your appreciation and congratulations on their success. Two excellent choices by Judge Tom Mather there. So there we have it. Champion Heidebeck Imperial Ruler Junior Warren, the Irish Wolfhound owned by Miss Pinkney, is going to take the, the crown in the Vulnerable Breeds competition for 2018. And the Bloodhound champion Harvardine Chardonnay of Badina, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Gibson, in reserve. Great ambassadors for their breeds. Louise Pinkley, the owner breeder, very happy to win this award, I'm quite sure. Louise. Louise, hello. Hi, Louise. Many congratulations on winning the Vulnerable Breeds competition. How does that feel? Super, absolutely super. Never expected it. Fantastic for him. Thank you, I'm shaking. Has it been a really nice day competing in this competition? Yes, it has. Um, it's not been so long because we don't have to come later. Um, he's had a hotel last night and the night before. And he's had sausages for his breakfast. So, yes, it's nice. I'm guessing he needs quite a few sausages. <laughs> We've had quite a few. <laughs> now, tell us a little bit about the Irish Wolfhound. Is this really good pu publicity for the breed? Um, yes, it is. But as long as people realise they're not an easy breed to own or to rear, you know, we've got pitfalls. Um, it, it's going, sorry, don't you dare. <laughs> um, but they're a fantastic breed. They are. I've had them a long time, so yes. <laughs> well, he's almost as high as me. I know I'm pretty short, but um, many congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the winner of the Vulnerable Breeds competition here at Crafts 2018. The Irish Wolfhound. So there you have it, the winner of the Vulnerable Breeds competition. Lovely win for the Irish Wolfhound. A nice lap of honour. Lovely winning moment there. Just look at her chuffed to bits and so she should be.